All right, welcome everyone to our arts vote chat with Councilman Erskine Oglesby, a mayoral candidate. Um, I want to welcome you on behalf of Arts Build and Arts Forward. Oh, we're excited to see everyone today. You know, Arts Build's mission is building a stronger community through the arts, and we do that as being an arts uh, funder. And our, we do arts leadership programs, uh, work in arts education, and help young people have arts experiences all over Chattanooga and Hamilton County. And we also work in the area of arts advocacy, just to keep reminding people that arts people vote and that the arts are essential to our city and to our world. Um, so I want to thank uh, Monica for um, her partnership with Arts Forward and also thank our uh, moderator, Ms. Carmen Davis, and of course, Councilman Oglesley for participating today. So I'm gonna turn it over to Monica and she will take it from here. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us for the next in our series of Art Vote with Mr. Councilman Erickson Oglesby. And today we have moderator Carmen Davis of Blue Cross Blue Shield, also of Rise Chattanooga. She's also an Artsville board member. She's also a part of We Over Me, and I'm sure I'm leaving something else out. But that's the, that's the top of the roster. Thank you, Carmen, for helping us today. And thank you, Erickson, for participating today. We look forward to this. Well, Carmen, I'll let you kick it off. Thanks so much, Monica. And thank you, James, as well, um, for allowing me to host this forum. Um, so good morning, Erskine. How are you? I'm good, Carmen. It's so good to see you. It seemed like it's been forever since it's even good. virtually uh, <laughs> seeing you. So it, it's really, I, I do get at least the treat this morning of getting to see you. Right, right, right. It's great, great, great seeing you this morning. Because like you said, we haven't seen each other uh, in person or virtually in a while. Yes. Um, yeah, but let's jump right on in. Let's get these questions rolling. So we oh, are... <laughs> We are nine months into what I like to call our new not normal. Um, and so I was curious of what art and culture activities have been sustaining you during this pandemic? Uh, well, you know, I'm a big PBS person. So they've had a lot of activities on PBS that uh, I have uh, been uh, checking out and uh, been doing a lot of, a lot of reading and um, a lot more than I've normally done. And I've actually read some poetry books. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I've just been, uh, you know, doing it uh, virtually uh, through public television and uh, reading. Okay. Yeah, I, I found myself watching um, a lot of the concerts that have been um, mm -hmm. going on virtually and trying my hand at being a, a, um, a, a home artist myself. Uh, mm -hmm. I would not show anyone my, my uh, attempts at being an artist, but, you know, we, we have all the time in the world. So we've been doing a lot of things at home and trying. Yeah. To and I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big jazz man. So I've been okay. really getting caught up on a lot of contemporary jazz because okay. I'm, I'm, I, I, I love that. And that's really how I sustain myself is, is through uh, contemporary jazz. I love, love it, love it. All right. So can you tell us a little bit for those who don't know about your personal background as well as any of your experiences in the arts? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, well, I'm a, a originally from St. Louis, Missouri. So how I got acquainted with Chattanooga was uh, through my wife, Cheryl, when we was going to Tennessee State University and uh, met her and had an opportunity to come to Chattanooga uh, for one of the UTC TSU games. And uh, I don't know if I fell in love with her or, the, or Chattanooga, but I think it was almost simultaneously because uh, when I visited Chattanooga, it wasn't really the place that people wanted to move to, but coming from the Midwest, it, I saw the beauty of the mountains, mm. the water, and it just has so much potential. And in my mind, I kind of figured, I said, this is some place I would love to become a part of my life. Uh, particularly since my wife was from here. Right. So that, that's how my love for Chattanooga uh, came about. Uh, I'm a, a, as, as I mentioned, I uh, went to Tennessee State University where I'm a graduate. And uh, the first part of my career was in hospital administration. And then my second part of uh, my career was dealing with nonprofits. And uh, that's, that's where 
my my love my professional love is in nonprofits because nonprofits help people you know they develop communities they 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 drive our culture and in this case I was working with the YMCA for a number of years and uh, eventually Cheryl and I actually decided after Katrina to move here because I I ran operations centers in Katrina mm -hmm. uh, in Mississippi and Louisiana and then when those funds came out it was like where do we want to be and we mutually agreed Chattanooga is a place where we want to spend the rest of our life. And, and I am so thankful that, you know, God put us here uh, to enjoy everything that we've had and make an impact. Uh, my, my experience in the arts is when I first moved here, Carmen, uh, my first volunteer job was, was with the, uh, then the Chattanooga African American History Museum, mm -hmm. which during my time on the board, we did a strategic plan and moved it on over and called it the Bessie Smith Cultural Center with the History Museum and the Bessie Smith Hall. So that's how my involvement got here to the point of uh, serving on boards and being involved with, with the arts. Um, during my, my time with the 100 Black Men and, 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 and Omega Psi Phi Fraternity, we always ran programs where we emphasize taking kids, getting them involved in the arts, whether it's visual or um, musical poetry. And that's something that has always been ingrained in me to share that with people. Uh, a lot of people really don't know this, but my art background really comes from my father who was a musician. And yeah, yeah, a lot of people don't know that because I didn't pick up any of those skills, but he <laughs> gave me a, a really good personality. And he played with, with musicians like Chuck Berry. Uh, he was part of the Ike and Tina Turner Review. He did some things with uh, Robbie Montgomery after, you know, they, they left uh, Tina, you know, Ike and Tina Turner. Uh, and they had a group called uh, the Kings of Rhythms which was credited with um, bringing blues to St. Louis, Missouri. So I've always been involved through my father, uh, through music and the arts from that perspective. But uh, since I've been here, I've, I've just volunteered in, in a lot of organizations and, and has always been a supporter of the arts. Uh, currently, I'm, I'm on the board. I serve as chairman of Mark Macon over in the Glass Street area, who does phenomenal works with kids. But one of the things that I like that we do at Mark Macon is we go into a Silverdale Correction Institute and do art programming to the inmates there. So uh, it's just my, my love and my participation in the arts go, go on and on and I, I really appreciate what the art does both from cultural standpoint to how it drives our economy and make communities and cities truly the great place that it is it's through the art so i mean i could really go on and on because I, I love the arts and uh would do anything to continue uplifting the arts uh, not only in chattanooga but throughout our region um, so I'm going to switch a little bit um, gears and think on a broader perspective. Um, what makes you most qualified to be mayor? And can you please give us some examples of your leadership and ac accomplishments that you feel have prepared you for this role? Mm -hmm. Well, as you can tell just from my brief snippet <laughs> of bio, <laughs> you know, I, I, I have a, a business experience that that transcends that well, really, I have experiences that focuses on public service, and that's what a mayor is. He he's a, he's a uh, he or she uh, is, is a public servant. And currently, I've been I'm serving on the city council. So since I've been on the city council, I have done two terms as chair of economic and community development, which one of the departments that comes under that is the arts public arts. So I've been intimately involved in, in uplifting and moving that program forward. And I've done uh, two and I've, I've been chairman of the city council and I've been vice chairman. So my public servant leads me 
and has, has put me in leadership positions that help positions me to what I believe would, would be a, a good mayor. Uh, while on the uh, city council uh, and for district seven, I've seen a lot of, of economic activity has exploded. Although it hasn't been equitably, equitably but it, it's starting to move in other areas of our city, which I've always predicted, you have to have a starting point. Mm -hmm. And uh, to, to, to make that starting point happen, it has to be intentional that it's going to reach those areas of citizens that has not had those opportunities. And I believe as the next mayor, I have positioned a lot of that to happen, not only for District 7, but you know, District 9, District 8, even you know, District 1, you know, any any district. And, and we need to be able to be collaborative and function so that everybody grows together. And uh, I've, I've collaborated with uh, regional organizations. I'm, I'm part of the Chattanooga Area Council of Government, which consists of all the mayors, county and city throughout Southeast Tennessee and North Georgia. So in my conversations with them is they're looking for, they, they look towards Chattanooga to be a leader and to be a front runner on how we could be collaborative and bring more resources to our area so everybody can prosper. And you know, I, I tend to take that, that global approach to my thinking, because I know we can't do it all ourselves. We have to collaborate. That's so true. That is so true. Yeah. Um, and so we're talking about your role and kind of in the big picture sense, but let's narrow it down and talk about the city's role in um, our local art community. How do you see that? What do you see the city's role is for our local arts community? Yeah, I, I see. I see that role expanding. I've, recently, I've had some conversations with some some citizens in, in the art community, and uh, you know, we have our public art department that just deals with the public arts. What I would like to see within our city, and I would work to create a a department that focus on arts and culture specifically, and I would look at ways on how to fund that, to make sure that our art organization has the resources that will uh, supplement what our foundations do for all our great art activities. So um, I've, I've visited some other cities and I've, I've made some calls and they actually have departments within their city that focus on arts and nonprofits. And I see that being a department within our city and uh it would be like one step from the mayor okay. to make sure yeah to, to, so, to make sure that we keep that culture activity going because as i mentioned earlier you know having art in our city drives the economy helps our culture synergizes our communities and it does so much to make cities great and chattanooga is already one of those great art cities. And I believe in talking to many of the art folks in, in our in our area, mm -hmm. they, they want to see something like that. And I would meet with the various art organizations to make sure that how it is developed benefits everybody. You mentioned the foundations and possibly creating this new department with um, that will be within the office of the mayor for um, the arts and nonprofits. Um, the arts, you know, they contribute about $172 million to our local economy. And some of mm -hmm. that is done through the performing arts. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of times, you know, working with the Betsy and some other organizations that you've worked with, um, that, that those public performances, those outdoor performances, um, can sometimes be a little bit tricky working with the city to get um, everything done. Mm -hmm. um, so what steps will you take to make the bidding process for um, city government opportunities more accessible to local organizations? And that's from the standpoint of opportunities within the city to bid on things, but as well as the process of making things happen within the city for arts organizations? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, it, it's, it's a, a great question. And, and it, it really falls back to like, 
I, I think about when we did the Bessie Smith Heritage Festival mm -hmm. a few years back. And that I thought it went very well. You know, we did it for about four years before, you know, we stopped and, you know, focused on the, uh, the uh, Bessie Smith truck, strut because that's what people really wanted. But uh, to, your, to your question is, that process is going to be easier for everybody across the board. That's one of the frustrations that I hear all the time from constituents is that process. And I, for one, don't believe it has to be, as the commercials say, it don't have to be that complicated. <laughs> so I'm going to uh, instruct our team across the board to look at how we could do things a lot simpler, uh, where processes are narrowed down and uh, there is not a lot of uh, grief, if you will, that goes into that. So that's just, I'm, I'm gonna instruct my team across the board to make sure that process is as fluent and flawless as possible to eliminate the frustrations that I've heard and seen from constituents. And there, there's no excuse why it cannot be that way. Because right. I've seen it done real simple without a lot of complications. Uh, and so with this new office that you're um, considering adding, if you become mayor, um, what new arts related policies or programming would you like to see come out of that office? You know what, I would really work with the art community to help really formulate that. Um, you know, I, I just want things to be fluent. Mm -hmm. and, I, I, and, and eliminate whatever frustration they are. So a lot of the new policies that I would implement will be done with those individuals who are directly impacted by those policies through discussions and community conversations to make sure that once they're put into place, they're, you know, they're, they're in place and we can just move on and take care of the business of the city, in this case, the arts. Over the, the summer and within these nine months, we've um, seen a lot of social unrest um, and it brought about a lot of discussion around how the city's budget invests in certain departments uh, within the city. Uh, one of those that had was a hot topic was the YFD centers. Mm -hmm. What role, if any, do you see the city of Chattanooga's youth and fam family development play in regards to art program for youth? Yeah, uh, from that perspective, uh, what I'm going to do programmatically is get rid of a lot of repetitiveness. Mm -hmm. And once again, you hear me say this a lot and collaboration because in the YFD centers, they, what, what my primary focus is going to be on is early childhood education because that's what's going to be important, important in moving our kids to the next level. And what I intend to do is those agencies like arts and, and some of the other um, organizations who focus on youth development, they will have an opportunity to be a, a primary resource in the development of programs in, in our YFD centers. And art is going to be very intricate because I know how important art is to kids. I know how important art is for me as a child. And uh, you'll see a lot of more collaborative program from those organizations who are what I call subject matter experts who can come in, they have the staff, they have the expertise, and they can just put those plans to work and bring us back data that indicates that we're getting the outcome and our children are getting the benefits that they need and families and adults uh, in our YFD centers. So do you plan on, speaking of bidding for outcomes, do you plan on keeping that same um, structure in place as far as applying for funding from the city um, where it's a, a BFO process for organizations? Um, because sometimes that can be a hindrance for smaller arts organizations. Yeah, 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 that, that, that is going to totally change. Uh, I was just looking at that format just this morning prior to coming on here because that's what the question I get a lot. Mm -hmm. And it's it's going to be streamlined, and we're going to create we're going to uh, we, we're going to reduce 
the hierarchy, the, not the hierarchy, but the uh, bureaucracy, if you will, that's associated with that BFO process. When there's for smaller organizations who apply, and, and that's only going to be in place for a year because after that year, we're really going to look at how we can better do our budget. You know, we have great people. Our, our finance team does a great job, but there's just been too many complications over the years with the BFO process. But I want to make sure that it's streamlined, it's transparent, and when people need to know certain things and to be communicated with, there is designation on how you can get that information quickly. And if you need assistance with it, then we'll at least have someone on our team that will help you walk through that. Great. Um, so you mentioned the public art department earlier uh, or the office of public art earlier. Um, what do you envision for this department if, when, or when or if you become mayor? Uh, as far as public arts, mm -hmm. um, one, one of the things that I've had conversations with is with, with art, so art, the art community is that uh, they, they want to see more consistency and they want to see more, uh, um, they want to see where they can get support. Okay. Okay, and that'll be a matter of probably adding staff and revamping just what public arts is because they've done some phenomenal things uh, since it's been since since I've been a part of it. So I have no grip, no qualms about you know what what public arts is about and what our people has been doing because I've worked with our public arts department making recommendations on some things that I wanted to see, and they have followed up on it. Uh, one in particular is what we're co currently going through with the Bessie Smith Blue Goose mm -hmm. Hollow Marker Project, which is something that I initiated through our public arts department. So uh, I, I see that expanding in its role. And I want to make things, I want, I want you to understand one thing. When it comes to a lot of the things that I'm going to implement, with the help of the art community, it's going to be with the help of the art community because I'm not an artist myself, but I I, I enjoy music. I I like what I like, you know. <laughs> when <laughs> you know, but the depth that artists have, and I was having a conversation with one of the committee meetings we had not long ago, where I asked some specific questions, and I made it clear that you know, y'all are the art experts, you know, help me understand so I can be there for you. Because as I always would circle back, art impacts so much of our city and who we are and where we're headed, you know, economically, socially. Okay. Um, educational what wise, yeah. We're, we're gonna kind of stay along the, the lines of, of the public art um, office. What would you do to ensure that equity in major public art acquisitions by our city supports and represents local black artists? Uh -huh. uh, well, I would, I would encourage our local black artists to, um, when, when, when opportunities arise, make sure you're, you're part of that. You know, apply, write your grants, you know, however the process is. So from that perspective, um, I would, um, I would focus on that. Uh, I would make sure that our local artists has the capacity mm -hmm. to, to, get the, to do the project and get the project done. And if that calls for some mentoring from other artists in our city, then you know that, that needs to happen. Um, but you know, I, I want to make sure that, that when those projects come up, they have the capacity. To get it done and i you know obviously i support local you know not just from the art but you know what whatever we need to move our city forward okay uh, early in the burke administration there was a lot of talk about transparency open data etc can you talk about how your administration will be open and share and receive info with the public um i mean it goes with i mean you know it's open you you whatever you whenever you request any right. kind of open data, right? My my team will make sure that you get it. Okay, 
uh, the transparency is, is very important. I don't know why you would not be able to get certain information, but it's going to be the, the front line of, of our team in my administration is, and, and our legal department to make sure that when people request information, they get exactly what they need in a timely fashion. Um, I mean, that's just that's just a requirement. I, I guess I'm getting to the point now. I don't know why you wouldn't get it. <laughs> right. right. Um, and a lot of these questions are submitted questions, by the way. Sure, that's um, okay. That's fine. So our different um, someone from our differently able able community submitted this one. Um, what do you plan to do if elected to change the familiar narrative of segregation and dismissal of the disabled culture in government, safe housing, and the arts? Well, you're you're hitting you're hitting one of my 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 points of of, of focus is uh, working with with citizens with disabilities, okay. and that will be a requirement. I mean, I'm I'm I have uh, supported citizens with disabilities in this town forever. As a matter of fact, one of my first uh, jobs here in Chattanooga when I I came here was. I was the regional disability program navigator for Southeast Tennessee. So it was my responsibility to make sure that uh, people abide by the law, that they made reasonable accommodation for citizens with disabilities, and that they had fair and equal opportunities, whether it's jobs or housing. So that brings the thought of having someone in my team because we do have the mayor's council on disability, but I want somebody specifically in my office handling issues surrounding issues that that citizens with disability have, and making okay. sure that people abide by the law, and that equal opportunity for all means equal opportunity for all citizens with disability, people of color, gender, you know, the the whole the whole gamut. Um, you mentioned the Mayor's Council um, on, of Disabilities as well, and there's also the Mayor's Council for Women and some other ones. Uh, do you plan on continuing those councils if, um, if you become mayor? Oh, like absolutely, absolutely. I see relevance in, in both the, the Mayor Councils uh, of Citizens with Disabilities, which I'm already looking at some things to, to make that better, okay. uh, because uh, from an employment standpoint and giving uh, the market as it exists now, that is what I can call an untapped resource to help with, with the employment needs of our city. And then the Mayor's Council of Women, I, I just can't even name all the great accomplishments that that council has had and, and continue to have, because I've, I've been some of the, uh, well, I, I didn't actually go to some of the events when you had the, uh, the conference in, right. um, in February, usually, but I've been to the reception. So, hey, great job, <laughs> great job. But yeah, yeah, you know, those are, you know, the Mayor's Council of Women, you know, you, they're doing a phenomenal job. Hey, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Whatever support is needed to make things better, then, you know, then, then give me a call. I'm, I'm here for that. But I do want to expand uh, the Mayor's Council on Disability to, to drive more support for citizens with disability. Because I have an autistic son, so I know how important uh, those uh, initiatives are personally through my son, who through disability uh, initiatives has afforded him the opportunity, which I never thought he would have to, to work a job. And, and to have opportunities where he has been self-sustaining. So, like I said, you, you hit, you, you hit my heart <laughs> string on that one. <laughs> so it's very personal for you to make sure that the differently able community is also inclusive with your administration and is ready. Oh, yeah. I mean, without a doubt, without a doubt. Uh, Chattanooga is known for its arts community, um, which you've mentioned, and artists are problem solvers. Would you be open to engage artists in complex problem solving, such as juvenile delinquency, which is some of the work that you kind of mentioned uh, with Mark Making, mm -hmm. uh, the homeless, violent crimes? Please explain how you would engage the arts community to help answer some of the complex 
um, social issues that we face here in the city of Chattanooga? Mm. Yeah, that, that's 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 a great that's a great question because that goes along with with alleviating some of the um, some of those concerns. I would I would really talk to some of those individuals in the art community on what on how they would want to help and get their recommendations on how we can uh, go about initiating programs like that. Mm -hmm. uh, I know there's some that already does that. I just believe that we need to just start bringing them together so they're not uh, segments of it. But uh, I would, I would, I would once again, I would support uh, those kind of initiatives because it can be blended in to solving so many of the issues we have with our homeless and mental health issues and, and, and behavior issues that exist. Art, art is a good mechanism to make that happen. And I know we have a number of art citizens out there that's passionate about it. And I would once again, rely on those subject matter expert people to help me put together a plan, an initiative, an area that we can focus on that. Oh. Um, given your current role as city councilman, how can we ensure that you'll bring your own ideas to the role as mayor? Well, the only only other person I would consider bringing their ideas as mayor is my wife. Everything else, okay, <laughs> everything else is really going to be based on uh, you know what I've heard from the constituent. If you try, if you're really referring to the political aspect of it, you know this is a, a nonpartisan job okay and and that's the way i ran for city council as a nonpartisan candidate and that's the way i'm going to run for mayor as a nonpartisan candidate and what what what's within my dna of service is to do what's right for the people because that's what you were elected to do to serve the people improve the quality of life now there may come some times we have to make unpopular decisions but that's just the nature of being in public office i found that out uh being city council right uh, <laughs> i'm sure you have <laughs> <laughs> so it, you can you can look back on, on my on how I've, I've uh served as city council and that should give you a pretty good indication what kind of mayor I'm going to be, okay? Particularly in my role that I had as chairman and vice chairman. Um, and so this is, I, I believe, where I, uh, my last question, um, or I'm not quite sure where I'm supposed to wrap up at. Is this, is it, is it now, Monica? Because I saw you kind of looking like. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. No, you have until 12:45. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Then okay. okay. I have a so we got another 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> We're keeping you all day, sir. All day. Oh. God bless you. Um, um, and so you've mentioned the ways that you've personally volunteered your own time to support the arts community um, and the ways you've done it through your role as a uh, city councilman. And um, a lot of that support is, um, it's great, you know, to have somebody to, to voice their support, but it also requires dollars. Um, so what ways, what innovative ways do you plan to fund um, some of these things that you're saying you would do as mayor um, of the city of Chattanooga as far as the arts community is concerned? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I would look at where we at with our budget and, um, you know, I would I would make recommendations to our finance team that, that this is my priority and let's look at um, what type of money it would take to move forward because I've already committed to the, apart the Department of of arts affairs however you want to look at it so it'll be one of the things that i instruct our finance team based on the the, the revenue that's that's coming in that year that this is specifically you know something I, I i want to look at and and i would once again i would look at i would you know confer with the art community to look at what type of funding is required to do certain types of programming okay um, so this question is is kind of close to my heart. I don't know who submitted it, but I love it. Um, what role can the city play in helping Chattanooga to become one of America's great music cities? Oh God, you can tug me again based on. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, one of one of the things that uh, that I, I thought and I thought a little bit about that because of of the the Bessie Smith 
uh, Heritage Festival that, that you and I did mm -hmm. about five years ago. And to me, that was a good start in moving Chattanooga to a great move. Uh, 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 we're moving it to a music city that can become a great music city. Because if you look at the four year progression of that festival, how we've already had quality acts, but I mean, we had really good nationally known acts. And the, the festival went from really local citizens coming to the fourth year where we had people coming from Dallas, Chicago, Oklahoma, some places where I had never even heard of. And to me, that was the start, but that's a good thing because that's what you want when you have activities like that. We need to do more things like that, particularly during our summer months to make sure that we attract um, national artists, but we programmatically and marketed it the way we did with this festival where people start coming from all over uh, the country. And um, a lot of it probably has to do with marketing and I would you know, get with the CVB and all the powers to be to let's, hey, let's look at how we can start marketing Chattanooga is a place where we can get those kind of acts coming. Now, I will venture to say that the Tivoli Foundation is doing a phenomenal job. I mean, since once again, <laughs> you were one of the inaugural board members, and I serve on the board now, the Tivoli Foundation, and to look at all the the, the entertainment that has come, the, the first the first class um, uh, Broadway plays, uh, the number of entertainers. You even can look at our own symphony. You know that what what they attract to our city. So, to me, it's just a matter of marketing and 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 being open to expanding on that. Because I think as as is that is what is being alluded to is that is an untapped resources that would just make. Chattanooga that much more of a great place to come and invest, live, work, the whole nine yards. And, and personally, I'm getting excited. Personally, I see that being our next venture to help us grow even more as a city because we're a great outdoor town. We got great tourism. You know, I want us to be a, a great place where people want to come and do business. I want us to be a great place where people can come and work. And I want people to see this as a great place where you can come and see great entertainment musically. So speaking of that, um, and you mentioned the Tivoli Memorial, uh, which are, mm -hmm. as you mentioned, bringing some great acts in. Um, but uh, our nightlife, our night scene is also another way to bring in live um, mm -hmm. To, to the area. So what changes would you make to existing ordinances or laws to enhance um, Chattanooga's nightlife? Because a lot of our local venues have been forced to shut down. Um, so mm -hmm. what ways would you help to keep them and make their life easier um, in order to bring even more live music to the city? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I like that idea because I think that's one of the things that's, that's not as, as, as vibrant as it should be is our, our nightlife. That was something I would I would I would need to, to look at and uh, you know talk to citizens who's interesting in in opening it up. It would really seem like it would it would I need to pull together a group and see how to make that work and then work with our city council as the mayor to make sure that we have you know laws and ordinances. Uh, working with our police department to make sure that citizens are safe. Uh, working with our fire department to make sure that, you know, standards are, are kept in place to make sure that, you know, to maintain crowd control and fire safety and all those other kind of activities that, that make it a great experience. So uh, I would, I would, I would love to work on that. And that's another thing that I believe is the next step in the progression of, you know, adding to the, the, the many great things that particularly come in post pandemic. Right. You know, those are kind of the things that we really need to start looking at because with the loss of so many small business, we need to start looking at creatively how we're going to bring people back and our small businesses up. Yep. Yep. 
Uh, so uh, my last question, because I'm sure this is going to take a minute for you to answer it. In your opinion, what are the primary roles of city government? The primary goal of city government is the roles. Yeah, yeah, I got you. I got you. I got you. I'm not. Mm, mm, mm. Um, <laughs> you know, the primary goal of city government really is is public safety and public service. You know, with our uh, with with the um, with like our public works and our infrastructure, those are really roles that why cities was 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 uh, formed. But with that being said, and going further, it's about uh, uh, programs for our kids uh, through our YFD centers. Uh, it's about community revitalizations. And you know, making sure that that community has the resources for them to be successful, and that we are serving uh, the citizens of of that community. Um, uh, let me see. You know, economic development, public safety. Uh, you know, programs for our kids. Uh, serving our. You know, uh, dealing with critical issues like what's what's really has expanded more and more is affordable housing making sure people have decent uh housing to live in uh neighborhoods that bring people together uh it's about working with our small businesses to make sure that they are are thriving and have the resources they need to be successful um one of the things that I would love to do, and I, I had started talking about it with economic development and some developers, is creating um, creating corridors for businesses to thrive, particularly in African neighbor African American neighborhoods that once existed like that. So I look at that as as a mayor is promoting and encouraging investment in areas like that. Uh, you know, the affordable housing pieces, the YMD centers, uh, you know, making sure our kids have safe places to go, that families uh, have the resources they need. Um, yeah, th those are some of the things in, in a nutshell, you know, economic development, community revitalization, because one of the things that has been happening uh, particularly in my district is that what I found was when communities get involved in the revitalization of their neighborhood, it creates a ripple effect where everybody start empowering themselves that when that neighbor cuts his grass, I cuts my grass, you know, uh, when, when, the, when, a, when a light goes out in the city and, and, and public works or EPB come and change that light, you know, that, that lets, those are the kind of things that let people know that you care, you know, because you can't always do those major things, but, you know, when people know you're listening to them and you care and you're willing to help do what needs to be done to, to do to help them invest in their community, you know, that that's what I believe. I believe in walking the streets, you know, meeting and greeting people and uh, simply letting them know that their, their voice is, is heard. You know, and then the other thing is that's lost in this, but not forgotten is taking care of our city employees. Yes. You know, right now, you know, we're struggling with the $15 an hour, you know, affordable wage thing. And I'm, I'm for that 100%. I, I supported that when I ran uh, for city council three and a half plus years ago. And as it turned out, the plan that I recommended was to make that happen. It had to be done, you know, like in stages to make sure that, you know, em employees can maintain their benefits like health and insurance, wow. but really it don't hurt the fiscal management of the city. And I applaud the, the city employees who deferred from that happen happening this past year because of the pandemic. I am so thankful that you know, they, they cared enough about our city to say we will defer on that matter right now, but there's not an expectation that it's got to happen year to year. So you got to be able to take care uh, of your employees who take care of the citizens of your city. So 
you know, there, there's a lot of things that has to happen. And, and one is as equally important as the other. So just because I might have said this first and this fifth, doesn't mean it is as important as a mayor. You got to be able to do all of that. That's why you have to surround yourself with a good, intelligent, diverse team that help you get that done. Well, thank you so much for your time, Erskine. I'm gonna turn it over to Monica now for the audience questions. Oh Lord. <laughs> oh, I won't be too hard on you, Councilman. Thank you, Carmen. You're always right on time, sister. Thank you. All right. Yeah, thank so you, got... Carmen. Checks <laughs> in the mail. <laughs> I've got several uh, questions that have been submitted in various ways since we started this uh, Zoom. So I will kick those off right quick. Um, the first, the art, I believe everyone on this call believes representation matters. And so the art should reflect the artist and the median of our city. What type of resources will these artists have in order to create more art in Chattanooga? Uh, well, you know, continue to continue to work with 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 funding sources. You know, the department that I will form, uh, that I will establish, will help to provide information to help you get to that point. Okay. Uh, let's see. The school district is beginning to do more to make sure students have equitable access to the arts. While the city is not responsible for public schools. What role can the city play in assuring that students of poverty have art opportunities? Yeah, it, it goes back to, I believe what Carmen and I talked about earlier is that we provide in our, our YFD centers, those kind of opportunities, which we will partner with art organization, artists to come in and provide those services for our kids. Because as I mentioned very early on, that to me is the primary role of, of our community centers is to prepare our children and our families for when they reach that level where they are going to the school system. And by coordinating activities with our school system and treat it as a partner and not necessarily as a separate entity, particularly as it relates to uh, before school time, after school time and time in the summer. Okay. So a follow-up question to that um, is was submitted. It says, if we do not have the money to fully fund hiring artists to provide art classes to all ages, particularly at the recreation centers, how would you feel about charging a nominal fee to contribute to the cost of these art classes? Uh, yeah, yeah, I would, I would be, I would be amenable to a very nominal fee. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I believe it happens for anyway in, in a lot of different mm -hmm. uh, incidents, you know, but it has to be where uh, it's more optional because you don't want to penalize anybody who just don't have the ability to pay. But, uh, you know, that, 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 is, that is certainly an, an option because I know artists, you know, they, they, they have to get paid like everybody else. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I get that part. So uh, I'm not... I would not object to a nominal fee or uh, a situation where, you know, we can create opportunities outside, that's okay, outside the, the YFD, but associated with the city to make that happen. I just can't, uh, uh, so I, I just can't emphasize enough on how important I want to see art in our, in our YFD centers to help educate and supplement, you know, to help kids, that art projects, help with, cre with, with, with creative, critical thinking and problem solving. And, and, and that goes a long way, not just towards preparing them for school, but preparing them on how to get along in life. Agreed. Okay, uh, next question. What do you know about the work with the youth done at Archway on Glass Street? Are you familiar? Uh, somewhat, somewhat, but but not that much. But yeah, I, I'm familiar with Archway because you know I know Glass Street. They does they, they do a great job in a lot of different capacity, as particularly as it relates to the arts. But uh, I would I would love whoever answered that question. Please feel free to give them my number, and, and I would like to uh, have further conversation with them about Archway. Okay. 
Let's see, next question is, we are known for our arts and outdoor activities, but also for being one of the top, or I'm sorry, let me repeat that. We are known for our arts and outdoor activities, but also for being one of the 10 most dangerous cities. What are some specific steps you will take to get us off that list? Yeah, uh, focus on um, community partnerships in policing. I believe that that is so, so critical. And I've always talked about that. Um, you know, we, we, we got to do better in, in building relationships um, with, with our communities. And we can't do it without the support of the citizens in that community. But we will continue to uh, be proactive in, in how, at least, I, you know, from my standpoint, we, we would be more proactive in, in how we police our communities. So it's not adversarial. It's about uh, it's about being a part of the solution and not treating everything as it is something that that requires a lot of uh, uh, jail time or or you know court time or anything like that. Perfect. Okay, so next question is, uh, and I believe you touched on this a little bit earlier, is Mayor Burke restructured city departments when he assumed office. Would you keep the structure, change it, and if you would change it, what would that look like? Well, uh, right, right. It would, it would definitely be changed, okay? Simply because when you come into office, you wanna do things differently. Uh, what that look like right now, is yet to be determined because there's a lot of people that's involved with that. And I would rather have one-on-one -on -one discussions with those, those individuals. But yeah, uh, I've, I've said this all along that, that when I became mayor, I would reorganize city government to where it, 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 it can be more efficient, uh, maybe in some areas not as redundant and putting people in a place where they can be successful and best serve the citizens of, of our city. Because one thing I did say earlier, I, I, want, I want the employees and my team to, to want to wake up in the morning and enjoy coming to work and enjoy serving the citizens of our city. So yeah, it, it, would, it would definitely, I've already mentioned one change and that was the art department. <laughs> so, but other than that, you know, to kind of close it out a little bit is that because so many different people are involved, that'll be a, a conversation we have to have in fairness to those current uh, people that, that now work for the city. Yes, sir. All right, what role do you feel the culinary arts play in our city? Yeah, that, once again, that, that <laughs> sounds to me like a, a YFD <laughs> kind, of, kind of activity. Plus I understand in, in uh, that our um, our libraries our library downtown has the capacity, and we've talked about this early on about culinary arts programs to help uh, develop skills, but then just to simply help with you know healthy eatings and things like that. So um, I, I could see that program being run through our library, which has the capacity to to do it now. Okay. Well, I think also, too, I mean, just the recognition of the talent that we have. We are very fortunate to have a wealth of talent, but also in our culinary arts here in Chattanooga. Um, mm -hmm. We've just got some good chefs out there, and we're very fortunate. Oh, yeah. Um, all right. So I have a combo question here. It is, uh, what excites you about the possibility of being Chattanooga's next mayor, and why should the people who make up the local arts and culture se sector vote for you? Well, I believe you... You heard me <laughs> for the past hour. Uh, what excites me about being uh, that about being the mayor of Chattanooga is that the the future, the future of our city, and and what's getting ready to happen as we come out of this these challenges we've been facing with this pandemic. Um, even though there has been some challenges during this pandemic, I, I see things could have been a lot worse. And we just need to do some things, particularly with our small businesses that you know help that when we come out of it to begin to elevate again. 
but I'm, I'm just excited about the future of our city. Uh, I'm, I'm excited about the process of, of, of that it takes for the citizens to make that determination, even if they want you to be the next mayor. But, uh, you know, good times are ahead. Um, we, we are a resilient city. You know, we've been through so much throughout our history. And this is just one challenge that we're gonna come out of even better and stronger than we are before. And um, the fact that, you know, my heart for public service, I have the passion and I'm gonna have one heck of a team that's gonna get us there. And, that, and that's exciting because it's not gonna be done by just Erskine Oglesby, the mayor. It's gonna be done by a number of people, a number of collaborations within our city throughout our region and throughout our state, because it's gonna be based on building relationships, it's gonna be based on building trust, which is gonna bring in resources that's gonna help everybody. That's fantastic. Well, thank you so much, Councilman. We really appreciate you taking the time to share with us today. Carmen, we appreciate you for you know allowing us to be on your schedule for you to come in and moderate for us. Thank you mm -hmm. so much. And um, I would be remiss if I didn't mention our next uh, two in the series. On January 8th, we have Dr. Eleonora Wood. And then on January 15th, we have uh, mayoral candidate Andrew McLaren also. And we continue to confirm these. So please, everyone still continue to tune in and learn more about your candidates. And I'll let James take it from here. All right. All right. I want to I take the opportunity to thank my agent, uh, Carmen Davis, for <laughs> setting all of this up. James, for your role, and Monica, thank you so much. Monica has been a jewel setting this up, so she, she's been real gentle, so. <laughs> well, we want to thank you, too, for um, spending this time with us today, and, you know, the arts have been so critical to us building uh, the city that Chattanooga is today, but also we know it's going to be a significant part of any recovery that happens, you know, with the pandemic. So uh, we appreciate you for sharing your vision and your ideas with us. Um, and on behalf of Arts Build, I will uh, just remind everyone that uh, we are in the midst of our annual campaign, actually ending it soon. So if you would like to uh, support the work that we do, you can visit our website at artsbuild.com. Um, this video, along with all of our other mayoral chats, will be on our YouTube page, and you can Google Arts Build YouTube and see that. And uh, thank you for joining us today and helping to just remind everyone that the arts are essential to our city, to our country, and to our world, and that arts folk vote. So um, we'll see you at our next session, and you all have a great weekend. Thank you all. Thank, thank you. you. Take care.